feel, I feel really blessed to go last because I feel like today is such a culmination of what us five companies really were blessed to be able to go through over a 14 week period. The mentors, um, you know, Nick and my mentor team, but all the mentors, you hear them talk about these companies um, as if they're a part of their team because they really are. They've become a part of their team forever. And uh, I'm just really thankful to be a part of Stadia. Thankful for uh, Steve Schwartz, he's in the audience today, for introducing me to Stadia. Um, as Nick said, my name is Jim Cavell. I'm the founder and CEO of Influencer. We're a software as a service content delivery network that serves sports team properties and helps them get all their content to the athletes and other brand ambassadors that actually have the audience that sports team wants to reach. And uh, because we're all sports fans and we love sports so much, let's look at how we used to watch sports. It looks something like this. Whether we were in a stadium or with our friends watching our favorite team around the TV, we were in to the game. We were watching every play, every second. And then the iPhone and smartphone came out. And now we watch sports like this. Whether we're at the game or whether we're around the TV, the feed on our phone is competing with the action in the game. And it gets worse and more intense every day. We have traded traditional media and the TV for our phone and social media to consume sports. And the reality for teams who used to bank everything on their media rights deals is that two thirds of the audience they're reaching is reached through non-owned social media accounts. The Boston Celtics have a $7 million a year deal for a patch on their uniform with GE. But you know what? The people who watch the game each night, the people who are in TD Garden watching it, make up a third of the audience they show GE to get that deal renewed. Kyrie Irving's posts, Jason Tatum's posts, super fans like Gronk and Mark Wahlberg in the audience's posts, that's two thirds of the audience. The Celtics are reaching. So with this reality, I wanted to really look further and figure out what does that mean for athletes? Because when I look at Matt Wilson with 100,000 followers for Alabama, I see him posting a Shutterstock shutter watermark picture. Or I see Stefan Diggs posting a Getty watermark picture with a million followers. Or with 30 million followers, Pogba, an international football star, posting a watermark picture even though the athlete has become a channel, he and she are clearly not a content producer. They can't even get pictures and videos of the moments they worked so hard to create. And I think it's a problem. So that is really what gave birth to Influencer. I started thinking, what if the athlete could leave the game, the match, and on the plane ride home, have all the content from that day streamlined to their phone? What if we could directly deliver content from the content producer who's losing audience to the content channel who's now the athlete. So we created Influencer and we serve content producers, mainly teams right now, who have photographers and videographers on staff shooting content every day. And we give them a place to upload and store all their content. From there, our system uses artificial intelligence to help tag it with each athlete who's in it so that we can deliver it to personalized galleries that live on the phones of each athlete and any other brand ambassador that the team wants to deliver content to. From there, those athletes and brand ambassadors receive it and share it to their social medias, and we measure it so the team can see, hey, tonight, I'm Duke Basketball. I had 800,000 people watching my game on ESPN, but between all my athletes' shares on Instagram, I reached 2.7 million people because that's the new reality of social media and how powerful athletes have become as channels. We launched about 16 months ago and we had some good traction early on. Uh, we have been able to secure deals with almost 40 logos now. I think we're 38 as of today. And these logos are on annual SaaS contracts. They start at $10,000 annually and they go up based on the amount of users um, involved in the strategy for that school. We generated over $400,000 of annual recurring revenue in our first 16 months of business. And uh, through this, we learned a ton because obviously you think you know what the market wants, but you don't know at all until you start working with the market. 
let's look at how this works. We'll take one of our clients, the University of Miami Athletic Program, and we'll use football, one of their teams that they um, have an account for with Influencer. And so the Miami football team is the brand example in this example. The brand ambassador example is the running back, Travis Holman, one of over 100 brand ambassadors in their football account. So the way it works is Miami starts by just building a database, just like a CRM system. Think of it that way. They enter name, contact info, social media handles for, in this case, 161 different recruits, current athletes, former athletes like Ray Lewis, and in between. These 161 individuals are like affiliate channels on social media for the Miami brand. And so once they've built this database, they can see things on their dashboard like, geez, our team account has 414,000 followers on social media, but just the athlete segment of brand ambassadors we've entered have 1.4 million followers combined. That's a 3.4x growth opportunity for Miami in audience if they can just give those athletes content to share each and every day. So from there, Miami stores its content into the influencer system. They can directly upload it, just like you would a Dropbox or a Box. If you already use Box, no big deal. Our API connects to it, so it migrates over. And this allows content to live in galleries inside Miami's influencer account, where all these brand ambassadors' names are also living. They can be tagged, as I mentioned. We have different ways to help tagging be efficient, like artificial intelligence, facial recognition, working on other ways to tag automatically, like number and jersey color. And these things now tag the athlete so that they get a text right after the game. Travis Homer gets a text and it says, hey, you got 16 new pieces of content in your influencer gallery. It sends him to a mobile app where his gallery is constantly being populated. And from there, he shares it directly to his Twitter, his Instagram, his Facebook, his Snapchat. He can download it if he'd like. And we track everything he does with it so that Miami can see how many more people they've reached in aggregate by providing content galleries that are personalized to all of these brand ambassadors. It's powerful. Last week, I had a, a, a great week as an entrepreneur because on Monday, I got to fly my dad down. I'm from Syracuse, New York originally. Got to fly my dad down to Durham, North Carolina to watch Syracuse, our team, play Duke. Now, both of those teams are clients of influencers, so we were hooked up and it was a great memory I created with my dad. But I got to watch an overtime game go 95-91, be an instant classic on ESPN, and after the game, I got to hang out with the players and see them clamoring for content through the app we've created with influencers. The next day I got to look at a report that my client success team prepared showing me that between the two teams, 2.7 million unique people were reached by the players just in that game compared to 900,000 who watched it on national TV. That's the power of what we're doing. And so for Miami to see that on their dashboard and reports and the other clients we have has become powerful because we're showing them that number one, you're growing your audience. You're tangibly growing your audience. If they even care about things like CPMs, for what they're paying us, they're paying a fraction of what they would pay for paid CTMs that come off like advertising on social media. Number two, you're protecting your brand. Instead of hoping that these brand ambassadors, these athletes, will do the right thing, you're giving them the messaging and the content to stay on brand, to stay on message. And inadvertently, you're protecting your brand instead of just telling them what not to do. You're engaging a network with your current student athletes that you are gonna be able to use a lot down the line to give them value in continuing to support their alma mater and get content they want. They leave happy when they graduate because they now have their whole career on their phone and you leave, you, you are happy when they leave because you can now continue to get them to support your school when they're gone. Promoting specific things like ticket sales and broadcast schedules has been something we've seen in a lot of case studies. And most recently, strengthening partnerships. The apparel partner is spending so many dollars because their uniform is being seen on TV and in the stadium, but now for the athletic director of a Miami to be able to show Adidas how many more people they're reaching because of an influencer has Miami upgrading to all 18 sports with us. And so this is something that we've been developing and learning from the marketplace, and we've also learned our place when it comes to the competitive landscape. 
we've really tried to build a full circle platform. I've shown you the brand ambassador database that we've built. It basically serves as a social media CRM for all your brand ambassadors. The full content storage suite, where you can upload and store your content or connect it to another storage system. Uh, the artificial intelligence assisted tagging, and the content migration, all the different things I've shown you, even being able to run campaigns and put share text with copy so that you can control the message and ask specific athletes or brand ambassadors to share specific things. So this full circle platform is really the approach we've taken. And when you look at the marketplace, Open Doors is really focused on just campaigns. Uh, Dropbox is really focused on being a content storage suite. And Greenfly does a few of the things we do, but isn't as full circle. And so we really want to become the de facto content management and delivery platform for these teams to be able to reach more people and do it in a way that's streamlined, as I've shown you. But really, the differentiator is who's using the platform. I mean, Zion Williamson and RJ Barrett are using this platform. They'll use it tonight after their game. We have built a network beyond our SaaS business, beyond a business that I'll show you I think can do 20 million annual recurring revenue in the next five years. Step aside from that business. We'll build it a media company. In college sports alone, a thousand plus influencer athletes are using this platform to share once or more per week. When I say influencer athletes, I mean more than 50,000 followers each. With a unique following of 10 million people. Now, if they could monetize their likeness, we already would be a media company. <laughs> it's supposed to be a joke. <laughs> At the pro level, we already could do that. But we've chosen college because we want to grow with these athletes into the pro level. I just came here from Mobile. I spoke to 80 kids at the senior bowl who will be drafted in the first two to three rounds of the NFL draft. Half of them already use Influencer. The rest of them will use it this week. That's the link between us and pro sports. We didn't choose to go directly to the NFLPA and say, hey, we want a deal because we know that these guys are millionaires and they're hard to approach and engage. But when they've been working with us since they've been freshmen or sophomore in college and they're valued by us and vice versa, we know we can grow into that level. And this media company will be a reality that we build on top of the SaaS business we've already built. So if you're an Auburn fan and your favorite player has 10,000 followers or you're a Kentucky fan and he has 200,000 or you're a, you're a Duke fan and he has 2 million, know that all of them are using our platform regularly. Been an entrepreneur uh, since college. I start chuckling because it's a roller coaster. And, uh, my wife's also an entrepreneur. She's here today with me. And uh, we have three kids and two startups. So we really have five kids. Um, and it, it's, listen, it's a roller coaster. I've made way, 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 way more mistakes than successes. Um, but I was blessed with an exit to build this business. And the biggest thing I learned from my last business was to let go and build a team. And so we have built a really exciting team, something that I've probably been most proud of with this business. We're 15 people today. We're about to move into our own building um, next week with a sign on it, and we're going up to 21 people. It's, it's exciting. And uh, I've done it before, but have never been as intentional this early in building a team and in being vulnerable with my team to be as collaborative as we are and get as, as much feedback as we uh, as I've got, I should say. Um, my CTO comes from Ottawa, Canada. Um, he was the webmaster for the Canadian government, leads a five-person engineer team. Uh, my VP of client success, I got to move from Manhattan, New York, where she worked for NBC Universal for 15 years, managing Olympics partnerships for athletes and brands, to Birmingham, Alabama. From Manhattan, New York, to Birmingham, <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and, and she leads a, a five-person client success team. Um, and then my director of business development moved up from Miami where he worked for CBSSports.com, CBS Interactive, um, and leads uh, a sales team that we're really focused on building this year. Funding to date uh, you know, is, has been a blessing as well. We've closed a, a $1.25 million seed round around this time last year. Um, and you know, we, we did it with angel investors who have SaaS experience in Birmingham. 
You know, Birmingham is going in a great direction like a lot of southern cities are. Three of my friends over the past year have had exits totaling in a billion dollars. Ship being one of them, Target acquired them for 550 million. So they've proven that you can build a great tech company in a mid-market in the middle of the South, but they've also invested back into the ecosystem. And so we've got some great SaaS investors, um, mainly in Birmingham. We also have the CEO of Teamworks, who has 3,500 teams in pro and college sports um, with their SaaS platform as an investor. Um, we've grown 5X since we raised that round. So we raised that round, we were about 80K ARR, we were about five months old. Uh, you know, fast forward a year later, uh, we're at 400K, we've grown 5X. We've added the logos I talked about earlier. And, uh, and, and so I was about to go into Stadia's uh, local, I guess hometown demo day is the right example, sorry Tim, uh, in, in, in Dallas. And I said, you know guys, I, I don't think we're gonna raise any money. We're, you know, we've got a good cash position, we've got decent runway, and I'm such a sales guy, I'm like, we're just gonna keep selling. You know, and uh, the mentorship I got from this network coming in to the office in Frisco saying, Jim, I hear you, but you don't know what the market's gonna do next year. Uh, you, you have a great story going on right now. You can get the right valuation. You should raise a little bit more money. So at Hometown Demo Day a month ago, um, I announced a $500,000 extension to our seed round because we're not ready to raise a Series A. We want to get to a million ARR. That's the magic number in SaaS. We want to get there first and raise the Series A there. But uh, I, I announced a $500,000 extension. The next week I started working on it. We raised $750,000 in less than 48 hours from three different people um, in New York City and Atlanta. And so uh, we closed the round and you know, I, I probably wouldn't have raised the money if, if you didn't bring, you know, just basically do intervention. Um, and it, it's worked out to be great because we're gonna be a little more aggressive in doing what we need to do to build a sales force. Show me the strength of the entrepreneur, I'll show you the weakness of the business. The weakness of influencer is me because I do all the sales. And so I will grow from a salesperson to a leader of a sales team this year, and you have my commitment, you heard me say it, I will do that. And that will add $1 million of new ARR uh, over the next 12 months, which this month will hit 90K of ARR in January alone. So we're already ahead of pace to achieve this goal and get to 1.3 million which is the goal by the end of the year. So if you look up here, you can kind of see the track we want to be on with annual recurring revenue, which is the metric in SaaS, um, along with gross profit. And so uh, in December, I made this, we we're at 350K. I wanted to get to 1.3 million ARR by the end of next year. You can see the track from there. Uh, our average client value ended last year at about $11,000 per logo. Um, but we've done several deals in the 20s, and I think that we really can get this to grow. So the goal this year is just to get it a couple thousand higher. Um, you know, the, the gross profit aspect really is determined by how many logos can be supported by one customer success rep. And right now we're at about 10 to 1. It needs to be better, and that's what our technology and some of the artificial intelligence things we're building will help us make happen. We want to get to 15 logos for every client success rep by the end of the year. Um, and then I talked about adding AE salespeople, account executives. Um, I'm not going to get into this too much, but we don't just do sports. Um, we're working with uh, political parties in DC. Um, we're working with some nonprofits. Not our focus, but something we'll continue to test and create use cases of so that when we raise our Series A, the investors can't beat us up on the TAM of sports, even though we're all excited in this room about the TAM of sports by itself. It's a huge market, almost $80 billion market. Um, but we have done some things outside of sports. And I talked about our headcount getting to, to 21. So, um, you know, the, the big thing for me is just rallying my team around our vision. And, uh, and so I'll end with this. We exist to serve storytellers. It's a big purpose. We'll never achieve it. I hope that when I die, somebody else is pushing this mission out because storytelling has been at the center of everything great that's happened since the beginning of time. You know, go read the Bible, it's all parables. Everything up to the present, storytelling is at the center of it. And so we wanna be powering storytelling through these new medias like social media and these new personalities that have become channels like athletes. 
And uh, we're on this mission to get to $1 million plus ARR this year, and we cannot thank this network um, from Stadia and Tim and Joe and Byron. Um, man, like, you're the man. I, I know you're not with Stadia anymore, but you're gonna do big things, brother. I'm proud of you. And so I just wanna thank everybody in this room for being here, for supporting this, and I look forward to talking to you more this evening.